Okay, terrific. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Uh, August 5th, welcome to um, Town Administrator Search Committee meeting. Do I have a motion to open the meeting? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Very good. Well, thank you very much again for, for your flexibility in meeting. And tonight we have uh, special guests from uh, Community Paradigm Inc., uh, Bernard uh, Lynch and Sharon Flaherty. And they're going to uh, begin the process of working with us and providing the guidance that uh, we were uh, asking the uh, select board to, uh, to secure through a professional consulting practice. Uh, my expectation is that a good portion of our meeting tonight will be an executive session. But I'm going to take care of some open items now and then introduce Bernie and Sharon. And uh, he can uh, provide us with a little bit of guidance as to uh, the information that he provided to us, uh, which is in front of you here. Uh, Town Administrator search process, uh, which effectively is Bernie's agenda, and then also the candidate questions that he is recommending. And I believe that uh, we probably will go into executive session a little bit later. So, so let me open up first of all with, um, uh, if I have a motion for the approval of the meeting uh, minutes from last week, which would have been July 29th. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay. Second. I'm second. I second it. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, okay. Very good. So tonight's agenda uh, after the approval of the meetings is simply uh, we're going to get an update from uh, Janet very briefly, um, review of the revised uh, question bank. And I realize that uh, Bernie is going to offer his as well, but we want to fulfill that uh, part of the agenda. Uh, Rebecca is also on, on the agenda, but uh, Rebecca beat us to the punch. So we, <laughs> she was going to give us an update on her engagement with the consultant, but the consultant is here. So thank you, Bernie and Sharon, for for helping us out. We're on an accelerated schedule, so we appreciate that very much. Um, a fourth item is the uh, discussion with the, um, with the consultant, and I believe a portion of it will be an open session. And then the last item on the agenda is to vote and proceed to executive session if it is the committee's wish that uh, that is the next step that we want to take. So. so without further ado, let me start first with Janet. And uh, do you have the questions updated? Yes, I do. OK. Were you able to make copies for us? I'm with you have them. You have them. Oh, I have them. OK, I'm sorry. I was. Oh, let me take a look, OK? I was, I was doing some tech stuff, so hang in there. Let me take a look. Why don't we spend about uh, a minute or so just reviewing these, and if anybody has any questions, let me know. Well, actually, it did, but these questions that, that I did and mm -hmm. Bob did um, have been incorporated into what um, Community Paradigm has said. Oh. Been. So it's very similar. When we looked at it, we were both saying, wow, how did they know all this? <laughs> Okay. Well, very good. I mean, we voted on these questions and the changes already, so it's just a matter of uh, just completing that on paper. So we have them here, and we'll present these also to uh, Bernie and Sharon uh, to see if uh, they meld well with their recommendations. So right. does anybody have any questions or comments on these? I don't. Are you on? If I may. I don't believe that the questions that the police chief and I requested to be added made it onto the list anywhere. Interaction with regional school districts and how to handle mid-year budget deficits. Wow, well, okay. Did, did you send that in a, um, an email? Or did we just talk about it? Well, we just talked about it during the meeting. Okay. All right. All right. Why don't, we, why don't you spell that out for us, please? We'll uh, call that number 21. Okay. Uh, I believe Chief Gillen went. Have the you paraphrase ever, is fine. Have you, have you ever dealt with a mid-year budget deficit? And if so, how did you handle it? Emergency budget deficit or something like that. And how did you handle it? Yeah. 
I remember that was a good question. Yes, it was. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be answering that question. <laughs> no, actually, it's a good it's a good feel for. Them. And the what second, what was the other one, please? Um, do you have any experience dealing with regional school districts? And please explain. So number 21 is, have you ever dealt with a um, mid-year budget deficit and how did you handle it? And number 22 is, do you have any experience uh, in working with a regional school district? So yes. those are amendments. So do I have a motion to amend Excuse this me, final uh, battery of questions? I had one other. We also talked about adding something regarding technology. Can, can you... Um, Articulate that so we can write it down. Can you share an example of where you utilized technology to improve one or more processes in your current job? Can you share an example of where you, where you utilized technology to improve one or more processes in your current job? So number three and three, can you share an example where you utilize technology to improve one or more processes in your current position? All right. Yeah. So we have the 20 that were generated by the chief and Janet. Thank you for that, the subcommittee. And now we just added three. We've articulated them openly. So let me reissue the call for a motion. Do we have a motion to approve these questions with the three amended questions from this evening? Sure. I'll make a motion to approve the questions with the three changes discussed tonight. Do I have a second? I'll second. All right. So this is a significant vote. Chief, how do you vote? Yes. Janet? Yes. Ruth? Yep. Beth? Yes. Rebecca? Kathy? Yes. Greg? Yes. And I vote yes as well. It's unanimous. So moved. Thank you. Thank you again, Janet and uh, Chief. Appreciate it. All right. Very good. I think what I'd like to do now, if unless someone were to object or have another issue, um, well, in sticking with the agenda, I just want to turn it over to our, our new colleagues, uh, Bernie Lynch and Sharon uh, Conley, is it, from... Community Paradigm, Inc. from Plymouth, Massachusetts. Again, thank you for uh, your time this evening. Well, thank you, and, and hopefully, uh, hopefully everyone can hear me. Uh, I will um, I'll try to speak loudly enough so that the members of the committee can hear me and not too loud so that I blow out the um, audio of people watching on TV. <laughs> uh, but uh, let me just uh, first thank you for, uh, for having me. Inviting us to participate in this process with you. Uh, just by way of background, uh, I don't know how much you know about uh, us. Um, this firm has been in existence now since, 19, uh, since 2014. Uh, my background is in municipal government. Uh, I was the uh, city manager of the city of Lowell until 2014 when I left there to, uh, to start this, this consulting business. I was there for almost eight years. Um, which in Lowell is a, a lengthy period of time. It's double the, double the average of a, ten, of a city manager. Uh, prior to that, I was the town manager, the first town manager for the town of Chelmsford for uh, about 20 years. Uh, and then I worked uh, for municipalities uh, for several years. <coughs> so roughly 40 years of experience working with four municipalities. Um, in 2004, uh, Sharon's background, uh, I'll jump in and speak for her so that it's she doesn't speak quite as loudly as I do. So uh, her background is in um, uh, journalism and uh, communications. Um, she was an editor of a, a daily newspaper, uh, as well as a, a reporter uh, at points in time, uh, as well as uh, in marketing for, in the financial industry before she joined up uh, with Community Paradigm. Uh, but her background is certainly is, as a journalist was covering the writing about municipal government. So um, she brings those skills to the table. Um, 
in 2014, as I say, we started this business, uh, and uh, we've quickly become the most active recruiting firm in the Commonwealth. Uh, at this point in time, uh, since 2015, when we did our first actual recruitment, uh, we're now up into uh, almost 65 town manager, town administrator positions here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, uh, one in New Hampshire and one in Rhode Island uh, on top of that. And then another roughly uh, 35 other positions that we've uh, helped fill for municipalities and for quasi-state agencies and regional planning agencies and the like. Uh, so we've, we've done quite a bit of recruiting, uh, quite a bit of uh, search work, but we also do uh, a substantial amount of public management consulting to municipalities. We have a, a team of people that, that work with municipal governments on a variety of issues. Uh, suffice to say, we know municipal government, we know the recruitment process, uh, we know the candidates that are out there, and I hopefully that will become apparent to you when we start looking at uh, the candidates and uh, start talking about their, their backgrounds and what they can bring to the table. Um, I have to tell you, uh, I, and I, I apologize if I don't have everyone's name, but a uh, comment was made that uh, the questions that, uh, you, that we sent along uh, were just like yours, and, and that is true. Uh, we, I basically took your questions and I incorporated them into our topic areas that we generally use. And I, your, your wording was uh, close enough to what we, what we generally do. I've written it so that we get to the, the, uh, the topics and get to the information that you're most interested in um, you know, achieving through the interview process. So, um, you know, but from what I understand, what you were really looking for is someone that had experience with this process that could help you, help guide you through it, someone that knew the market, that knew the field of candidates that are out there, and uh, hopefully we, we have that based upon our experience doing this uh, throughout the state. Uh, and as you will see, uh, we have connections with municipal people uh, in a variety of different ways, whether it be uh, our own uh, background in municipal government, recruiting process that we've been engaged with, uh, or academically. Uh, I'm a faculty member at Suffolk University, uh, adjunct faculty, and uh, you know, run across a number of different people that go through the Suffolk uh, Public Administration program uh, that, uh, that, we, uh, that we know. So we, uh, we, know, we know a lot of people, and hopefully we'll be able to bring that to the table. Uh, and then I also understood that you wanted, you were hoping that you would have someone that um, came to you uh, to, to help in this process that knew municipal government and knows what a town administrator, what skills are necessary, what responsibilities uh, exist for that person, and uh, uh, what you should be looking for. And again, hopefully with um, roughly 30 years of experience as a manager, 20 in Chelmsford, 8 in Lowell. I didn't mention I also spent about six months as the uh, interim manager, I uh, was acting manager in the town of Winchenden uh, at the request of the State Department of Revenue uh, to clear up some financial issues out there. Um, you know, I know what goes into this job, uh, and I'll be the one that's, uh, Sharon and I will be the ones that will be working with you, although we may bring other members of the team in as, as necessary. Uh, but, you know, I guess my, my comment about the question is going to be that clearly you, you You've been doing some good work, uh, and uh, we're anxious to work with you to uh, keep the process moving, uh, to give you the guidance that we can. Um, and um, you know, I think at this point in time, um, happy to take any questions you might have. But uh, the way I see it is tonight, getting to meet us, uh, going through the steps in the process, um, you know, having some discussion when we probably when we start talking about the candidates. Uh, having some discussion about the qualities that you're going to be looking for uh, in the uh, candidates that you interview, uh, and then obviously uh, talking about how the interview process will take place and um, you know, how we would uh, address some of the issues that we have with the candidates through the interview questions. Uh, and so uh, that, of course, would all be done in the executive session. Um, you know, our process, you know, generally when we walk into a community, uh, we do we do quite a bit of work right up front, finding out what the uh, 
community is looking for, what the selectmen are looking for, what the um, department heads are looking for, uh, what the residents are looking for, and we put the, all that together in a position profile that spells all of that out. Uh, you're past that step at this point in time, uh, and that's okay. You have some, I've seen the resumes of the candidates you have, you've got some uh, interesting candidates there that we'll be able to talk about. Uh, next step in the process and uh, I heard the chair say that you know this is on an expedited process and I uh, I agree that uh, and that, that uh, that's achievable the next step I think is for us to uh, review those candidates and then uh, schedule some interviews uh, so that we uh, can take those semi-finalists if you will and, and narrow them down to the uh, finalists that you would then send on to the board to select so uh, it's a pretty simple process, and maybe it seems overly simple to me because we've done it, you know, five plus dozen times. Uh, you know, and, uh, but um, happy to take any questions you might have. Great. And by the way, uh, my correction is Sharon Flaherty. <laughs> Flaherty, right. <laughs> That's right. The only thing that I have on my mind uh, that I want to share with you is um, we have a very interesting situation. We we're we're in the process or we'll be in the process of pursuing a special act so that we can customize the position a little bit more locally but we didn't want to wait for that special act because there's two special acts one of them is to terminate the finance director position and then the other is that we want a, a special act on how we want to craft the town administrator so this first hire is going to come in under existing state law and the appointment authority will be probably a little bit different than when we phase in the special act. I don't know if that's a complication that we should be worried about. So for example, the appointing authority on the state law will remain the select board. Right. In the special act, and by the way, uh, right now, uh, individual town departments can hire and fire. Uh, the special act could probably fulfill one of the goals of the um, select board, and that is that the town administrator essentially will do the hiring with the approval of the select board. So if we're hiring and interviewing someone today, and they plan on hanging out for a while, like a year or more, and that's our hope, they're going to know that uh, they need to know that there's going to be a change of law, potentially, and their role could materially change would that be a problem is that a challenge have you experienced that before um yeah i, I guess the, the short answer is yes and generally the, the the one that the case that comes to mind it, it actually is a little bit different spin um the town of amherst um was looking to hire a town manager and we did the search on that and the big question mark was going to be a change in their form of government, possibly moving to a mayor. So the question for the candidates then became, well, if I get appointed town manager in two years from now, you make you go to a, a mayor. You know what happens? Uh, so we had to we had to deal with that and counteract that. Um, the town of Swansea is um, they were interested in perhaps doing some type of um, special act, uh, and that's where they are right now, but they hired their town administrator, um, uh, time has slipped by through this pandemic, I think it was about a year ago, year, yeah, about a year ago they hired someone. And there was the knowledge that at some point in time they may look to do something. So uh, she's now been in place for a, about a year, uh, thereabouts, and, um, they're now looking at uh, a special act similar to what you're talking about. Uh, I was not aware um, about your situation, um, but it's one that I think that if you say we're hiring someone for this job uh, and we're exploring modifications, we just need to be able to explain that to the, um, the candidates. And I would, I would probably recommend that we incorporate a question of that sort uh, during the interview process 
to ask how they feel about that and what their, you know, what their comfort level is. You're growing the position, so it probably, I would think the candidates would see this as a positive, that they would come in and potentially be able to grow the position as they grow in the community. Yeah, the appointing issue is a, is a significant issue. <coughs> from if we go from point a to b successfully that will be an increase in authority and i think most candidates that we would be interested in would welcome that opportunity it would not be a diminishment of authority so we're going in the right direction for a strong yep. candidate so we're fortunate no, that way i agree with that okay great that was my only concern i'd like to open it up uh, uh to my committee members if they have any questions or comments that we can handle in open session Okay. Uh, quick, maybe. Um, has the has Paradigm seen the job description that was prepared yet? I I, I um, believe I have seen that. Yes, uh, I've seen the. Um, I'm looking at my file right here and see what I have. Um, I apologize. Bear with me for one second. Um, I have the the posting. Uh, as advertised, and oh yes, I do have the job description, uh, dated 7-29-21, yes, yep. Okay. You know, and I think it's, I think it's important, it's important, to, it's important to note that every town administrator position, uh, for that matter, every town manager position is a little bit, is a little bit different, um, and I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, we did a, a town manager search, and you, when you think town manager, you think uh, a substantial amount of authority. And, and, and generally speaking, they, there is with the town manager. But in this, in this particular community, the town manager did not appoint boards and commissions. And I'm not saying a town, sh a town manager should do that, but in this particular case, they did not. Um, and they appointed most of the department heads. Uh, but one of the candidates that they were looking at had been a town administrator and in the town where he had worked, he had appointed as town administrator, all department heads, all board, all commission. So every job description is a little bit different um, based upon the way that the special act or the home rule charter is written. My anticipation is that we'll probably make some changes to the job description when we go from one lot to another. Yes. Yep. And I think you're right. We need to be really upfront with all interviewing candidates that that is in progress. And even more importantly, we don't have clarity as to what that special act will ultimately detail. There will be right. some flexibility with this. It will be a little, little bit of craftsmanship. Yep. And, and it, it may be useful to have someone in the position um, without those those authorities that may be able to make recommendations uh, and help help through that process as well. Um, and you know, I think appointment power is or appointment authority or appointment responsibility is a very important function of a, a town administrator. Uh, but there are an array of other issues that I would certainly recommend that you consider uh, relative to the development of, you know, who's, who develops the budget, what's the process that the budget is developed, uh, you know, certain other responsibilities that you, you want to look at as you're doing, looking at that special act. Okay. There may be, there may be elected positions that suddenly you want to reorganize and restructure into appointed positions. Um, you know, there's all sorts of we, do, we actually have written charters for communities, uh, special acts, and uh, these are, those are the types of issues that uh, communities uh, spend quite a bit of time looking at. Very well. Um, we, um, before we go into executive session, I just wanted to uh, just remind the committee that I won't be here next week. Um, I, Rebecca, you'd be able to manage the meeting for, for us. I appreciate that. Um, we're having a real challenge with space and time, so I'm wondering if it's possible. And then the alignment of media and cable, it's getting complicated. And 
So um, I'm wondering if can, is it possible to pick the same night? And I heard that Thursdays is one of the few nights that is not being asked for by most committees and boards traditionally. It's kind of like a little bit of a dead spot, and that's why we kind of seem to fall into it. So can we, uh, we don't have to make a commitment for all Thursdays from here on out, but the expectation is I think that's where we're going to end up falling. So can we make a commitment for next Thursday? And I, I'd like to I'd like to speak, Mr. Chair, if I could speak at some point, uh, and I don't know if it's, you know, we need to figure out through the uh, discussion that we have in executive session regarding the candidates, but, um, you know, the um, we need to talk about uh, setting up interviews and, and we have recommendations as to how that's done. Uh, you know, how many can, first off, we have to figure out how many candidates are being interviewed and then it's, you know, you want to be able to do, uh, you know, we have some communities that do all the candidates in one day. We have other communities that break it up uh, half and half, uh, but you don't want to, you don't want to have too much time between interviews. Uh, and, you know, hopefully, I mean, my, my expectation, uh, and I'm not trying to rush this, but I do understand you want to move this along. But my understanding, uh, but, but generally speaking, when we get to a point where we've got resumes and we're reviewing them with the screening committee uh, and selections are made, uh, the next step is to uh, set a date for interviews. Um, so perhaps, you know, we can tentatively set something up for next week or the potentially the week after, whatever, whatever makes sense. But then we should really start talking about uh, interview dates as well. Okay. Depending on the number of candidates, I know we did um, guarantee the select board that we would have three finalists, but the expectation is we, we expect that we'll have more, so anywhere from three to six. <clears throat> so if uh, we can do three interviews in one night, that's probably yeah. doable. Well, a six would probably be not a good idea. Yeah. You're talking about semifinalists for the screen. Right, exactly. And we do have we do have a goal of delivering those semifinals by between September 17 and September 24th. Oh, I I would hope that you, you well you you're going to deliver the three finalists by that date. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. That that shouldn't be a, that shouldn't be a problem. But, Good. Um, because but it, again we'll have to we'll have to talk about that when we go through the candidates. Sure. Okay. So. Um, can we meet next? Uh, are you available, Bernie and Sharon? I, I, I am available. I am available next week. Um, you know, and I, I would again, I would say tentatively, let's we could set that. Uh, but after we go through the resumes tonight, um, it may be a situation where we look at some different dates and we can okay. talk about that. That's fine. So we'll, that's why we'll do one week at a time. So all right. So we'll meet next week. I'll work with Rebecca to put together an agenda and and uh, bernie and i'll have that all done in the next 24 hours without error like i made last week with the, the date because i'm using a template and um and then the meeting will will operate um without me chris if uh, if you can help us out next week i won't be here nor will my computer that'll probably be a benefit honestly that'll be okay good that's fine that's fine. If uh, and 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 Catherine will help us with her Apple computer, and I think that'll be fine. We're going to try and replace those speakers. That's the goal. So we did have a real technical breakdown. So, all right, very good. So we won't come out of executive session because we've set a meeting for next week, and I'll set an agenda in the next 24 hours uh, with your input, which we can also finalize in executive session. So, Beth, would would you be kind enough to read out the executive session? Sure. Um, going into quickly. Sure. We need to approve the minutes first before we go to the session. We did. We did. The minutes from last week? Oh, we already did that? Yeah, we did that, yeah. Okay. That's okay. We're moving so quickly that uh, we're so efficient, Greg, that you missed it. <laughs> but you, you voted in favor, so you don't want to take that away now, do you? <laughs> Any other questions or comments? I have one other question, just as far as, <clears throat> excuse me, where we are in the process. Has the job been posted besides where we initially posted it some time ago? Has the revised job description, and I think that 
um, Paradigm Associates was going to aid us in other places that we should post it. And I just wonder if where that stands so that we can understand where the resumes are coming from, if, they're com if we should expect them to come from some more avenues or if what we're working on now is what we are expecting as we go through the next phase of um, planning and reviewing. I think from from my from from our perspective, uh, you know, I think if if you when we um, uh, made our proposal to the um, the board uh, in our scope, we indicated that we would explore the possibility of identifying additional candidates, not necessarily reposting the position. Okay. Uh, if, we're, if we're reposting the position, that's another that's another. It's not a big deal in terms of scope. But it's a big deal in terms of time, uh, right. and I and I would probably say that you there's probably not a lot of additional candidates you will pull in, and we can talk about that in more detail as a okay. review candidate. But uh, so so yeah, and I, I don't know if and maybe someone could help me on this. Um, my understanding is you posted without a deadline, so our. Any more resume? Have any more resumes come in since the last batch? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not aware of any other. Any posting. more resumes come in? That and, no and resumes and, have come in. No, the answer is no. Okay, and I'm going to guess that you posted at the MMA website, and that was it. That that's where it is, and where it's been posted. I don't know of any other posting anywhere else. Okay. Uh, there was a posting of the job description, I believe, completed today. Um, um, Beth had uh, sent a communication uh, indicating that we wanted to get the revised job description on our website, <clears throat> which is a source also for people that are looking for work. They're you know looking at it you know our our website and there is a section there for openings and but other yeah, than that, I, it's very limited. Know, frankly, frankly, uh, I, I agree with you. People looking for jobs go go looking at. Uh, uh, municipal websites, um, but a job like this, generally they're, they're looking for town administrator positions, and so they, they, they generally use either the MM, they use three different sources. They use the MMA, they use the ICMA, the International City and County Management Association. Uh, that would bring you people from other, 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 st other states, uh, primarily. Um, and, and that's a whole other issue that we can talk about when we talk about candidates of their knowledge of the town meeting form of government and uh, you know that's somewhat unique to new england massachusetts new hampshire uh, maine vermont um the other the other place that people look for jobs is um websites like ours uh we get uh and sharon has the better numbers on this than i do but i think we get 6,000 hit, 6, hits a month of people looking for jobs. So, um, you know, we have a, I have a whole database of people who, um, you know, contact us that they're interested in becoming a town manager or town administrator in Massachusetts uh, or the United States, uh, you know, so that we have their resumes on file. Um, and, you know, I've kind of gone through those, uh, to see if there's anyone uh, specifically that would be specifically interested in a, a, a Groveland, but generally, uh, so far, I, I haven't uh, located anyone like that. But you know, we could again. We need to review the, the resumes we have, but in the meantime, we could put the job description up on our web page. That's not a that's not a problem. Uh, it's a, it'll be it's a, it'll be a different format than we typically use. We do profiles. Um, but the job, we, we can do a job description. Okay, very well, thank you. Anybody else with comments or questions? I have a question. Go ahead. What if we get a resume, for perhaps an employee referral, and the candidate looks good, and they're in the final interview process with people that you are submitting to us, and suppose the town hired that person, how does that work with you? If you hired someone, that that was an employee referral. Yes. Uh, 
you, you can hire anyone you, you want. Uh, we, our fee is based on working with you on this project. So if you hire someone that comes along, if an employer referral, and I'm not sure what you mean by an employer referral there, what an example of that would be. It would be an employee for the town that knows of someone or someone approached them and the employee brought the resume in to Joe or Rebecca. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's fine. They have to go through the same process that everybody yeah. else is going through. Yes, right? yes. We'd be, we'd be sitting in there. We don't get paid, unlike a private, I wish we were like a private headhunter. Uh, yeah. It would be a much more lucrative profession. Uh, we don't get uh, paid by the the people we place. Right, I understand. To just work through you, work with you through the process. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and in the private sector, you, you know, you pay a six months or a right. year salary uh, to the headhunter. And you don't get that. Thank you. Very good. All right. I think we'll tr try to go into executive session. All right. So we'll enter into an executive session pursuant to Mass General Law 30A, Section 21.8, um, to consider or interview applicants if the chair declares that an open meeting would be detrimental to the public body's ability to attract qualified applicants for the position, this must be declared. So we're declaring that we would like to enter into executive session. I think and that we will not go back to public session. We won't go back to we public session. We will not uh, go back to public session. We're going to stay in executive session continuously till the sem uh, September 24th. All right. To, <laughs> I'm kidding. To the conclusion of the meeting tonight. <laughs> I think I, I need to do a roll call. It's been a while. Yes. Yes. Um, you, we have to convene an open session. We have to state the reason, which we just did. We have to state whether the public mm -hmm. body will con reconvene, which we've said. Mm -hmm. but we have to take a roll call vote of the body to enter into executive session. If it's remote, uh, members must also say um, that they're present and that they also must notify us that there are no other members around them that could are uh, listening to the um, the executive session and all votes must be roll call body may only discuss matters for which the executive session was called so let me do a roll call of 10 people here assuming that all will participate so Sharon will you participate in our meeting executive session Bernie yes I, I, I don't vote on that huh he's not on the committee Okay. All right. So it's just a committee member. I thought everybody that's in executive session, because that's what it states. Okay, that's fine. Okay. But you'll you'll join us in executive session. I will. Yes. Okay. That that was. I'm uh, just getting confirmation of that. Uh, Beth. Yes. Yes. Rebecca. Yes. Yes. Kathy. Yes. Yes. Greg. Yes. Chief. Yes. Janet. Yes. And Ruth. Yes. And myself. So it'll be uh, eight of us um, from the committee going into executive session. And that ends our public uh, session.